Many people wish they had more time to do a lot of things in their day. But in reality, many of us don't find that time, and we often need to prioritize some things over the rest. For example, you may find that it is really hard to balance work, sleep, and having a good social life. Most of the time, you need to prioritize only two of these three things. You may be wondering, what does this have to do with crypto? Well, the thing here is that blockchains are also faced with the same problem, decentralization, speed, and security. These are three very good characteristics we would want in a blockchain, right? But the problem here is that most of the time, developers of any blockchain need to favor or prioritize only two out of these three characteristics. This is known as the blockchain trilemma. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will understand what is the blockchain trilemma and its three characteristics, which are decentralization, scalability, and security. So, let's get started. So, like what we said at the beginning, the blockchain trilemma is the problem developers face when working on any blockchain. Most of the time, they need to favor only two characteristics. So for example, you may have a very secure and decentralized blockchain, but it is very slow at processing transactions. Another blockchain may be very secure and very fast at processing transactions, but the problem here is that these transactions are verified by a small group of computers and these computers are operated by few companies and individuals, which gives them total control over the blockchain. So this blockchain is not decentralized. Finally, you may have a very fast blockchain that can process thousands of transactions per second while still being decentralized, but it is not that secure and may be vulnerable to attacks. The term blockchain trilemma was first introduced by Vitalik Buterin, one of the co-founders of Ethereum, and you may also hear this problem called the scalability trilemma. So, why does this problem exist? Why can't we have a decentralized, fast, and secure blockchain? Well, to understand why, let's explain the three characteristics of the trilemma, which are decentralization, scalability, and security. Let's start with decentralization. So, decentralization simply means that no single individual, company, or entity controls the asset. So, this is the opposite of what happens with fiat currencies, like the dollar or the euro where you don't actually have much control over your money and at any time, your bank can freeze your money and prevent you from spending it. On the other hand, a blockchain is simply a distributed ledger or database that contains users' accounts and transactions, and instead of relying on banks to verify transactions for us, we rely on many computers, also called nodes, connected to the network. But the problem we have here is that each one of these computers may have its own version of the users' accounts and their transactions. So, it is obvious that this can't work, and they will need to reach agreement on one correct version. So, these computers reach this agreement on the correct version using something called a consensus mechanism, and you may know some examples of these mechanisms like the proof of work and proof of stake. Most of the time, the decentralization of a blockchain can be measured by the number of computers verifying transactions on the network. So, for a blockchain to be decentralized, first there has to be no central authority or group of people controlling the network, and making important decisions. Also, there has to be a large number of computers verifying users' transactions, so that no one group of computers control the network and prevent some individuals from making transactions. Also, in a decentralized blockchain, anyone should have the ability to participate in verifying transactions by setting up a computer and connecting it to the network, without the need for approval from anyone. An example of a decentralized blockchain is Bitcoin, Bitcoin uses the proof-of-work consensus mechanism, and currently, there are thousands of computers all over the world verifying users' transactions. In this proof-of-work mechanism, anyone can join the network and participate in verifying transactions without the need for approval from any authority. So, the Bitcoin blockchain is decentralized, but the problem here is that it is pretty slow. On other decentralized blockchains, using proof-of-stake for example, when there are a large number of nodes verifying transactions, the time it takes for a transaction to get confirmed increases. Now you may be thinking, how does increasing the number of computers verifying transactions increases a transaction confirmation time, it should decrease it? Well, that is not how it works in decentralized networks. Here, 
When we increase the number of nodes, it is like increasing the number of people who need to reach agreement on a decision. So for example, 10 people reaching agreement on a decision should be much faster than 100 people reaching agreement on a decision. This gets us to the second characteristic, which is scalability. But before we continue, if you have been enjoying the video so far, hit the like button, it really helps the channel. So, scalability is simply the ability of a blockchain to process a lot of transactions per second and also how fast a transaction can get confirmed on the network. Scalability is one of the things stopping cryptocurrencies from mass adoption as a payment method. No one wants to use crypto as a payment method if they would need to pay $30 as a transaction fee on an everyday purchase. Also, no store will accept crypto if they would need to wait for 50 to 60 minutes to make sure that their transaction is confirmed, which is the case with Bitcoin. So, Bitcoin uses proof of work and can process only from 5 to 7 transactions per second, which is very slow compared to centralized networks like the VisaNet, which currently processes around 1,700 transactions per second, and you may hear that theoretically, it can even process up to 24,000 transactions per second. So, why is Bitcoin that slow? Well, it is mainly due to the block size, which is currently limited to around 2 megabytes. This block size means that a block on Bitcoin can store around 3,500 transactions. You may know that a new block is added to the Bitcoin blockchain once every 10 minutes. So that gives us around 5 transactions per second. Now you may be thinking, why not we just increase the block size? Well, the Bitcoin community actually discussed this for a long time, and many people see that it will hurt the decentralization of the network. This is because the cost of running a node to store and verify the Bitcoin blockchain will be higher, as it will mean more storage and bandwidth. So, these rising costs will make many people stop running these nodes, as they do it just to help secure the network, and they don't make any money from doing this. Keep in mind that here we are talking about the full nodes that just store and verify transactions on the Bitcoin network, not about the miners who produce blocks. Full nodes are easy for anyone to run on a laptop or a personal computer. Miners on the other hand run special expensive mining hardware. Also, miners make money from producing blocks, full nodes on the other hand, don't make any money. So, like what we said, increasing the block size will lower the number of full nodes, which will hurt the decentralization of the network. The same also happens with proof-of-stake blockchains. When a proof-of-stake blockchain has a very large block size, the hardware requirements for running a computer to verify transactions will be high, and this will reduce the number of validators on the network which will also hurt decentralization. Another way to improve scalability in proof of work is to reduce the difficulty of mining a block. This will allow the network to produce a block in less than 10 minutes. So more blocks will be produced and more transactions will be verified in the same period of time. But the problem here is that it will hurt the security of the network as it will be easier or cheaper to get the mining power required to attack the network. Anyways, so like what we said, Scalability is not only measuring how many transactions the network can process per second, but also the finality time, which is simply the time it takes for a transaction to be considered fully confirmed and cannot be reversed. Like how we explained, most of the time, when a blockchain is really scalable, there is some trade-off in terms of security or decentralization. So in some crypto projects, like EOS for example, you will find that the network is very fast, so a transaction may take half a second to be confirmed, and the network can handle around 4,000 transactions per second. But the thing here is that the number of nodes that can verify transactions is only 21, which is a lot less than the 11,000 nodes on Ethereum, for example. Still, that doesn't mean that EOS is centralized. These 21 nodes are chosen by the token holders, so it is still decentralized as the token holders are technically in control of who gets to verify transactions. After all, decentralization is a scale, and it is normal for some blockchains to be better decentralized than others. But in a lot of cases, to achieve scalability, there is a trade-off in the number of nodes who get to verify transactions. Now let's talk about the final good characteristic in the trilemma, which is security. When we say a blockchain is secure, that means that it is resilient and it's very, very hard for an attacker to actually attack the network and be able to approve fraudulent transactions or steal coins from other users. In Bitcoin, for example, the more decentralized the network is, and the more people participating in verifying transactions, the more secure the network is, and the harder it gets for an attacker to attack the network. That is because for an attacker to be able to attack the network, he needs to control the majority of the computing power on the network. 
which means he needs to control more than 50% of all the computing power on the network. So the more people participating in verifying transactions, the higher the computing power on the network, and the more expensive it is to try and attack the network. We actually have a full video about 51% attacks if you want to know more. So, decentralization and security are connected most of the time, and Bitcoin is very secure, almost impossible to attack, also decentralized, but it is not scalable and very slow, so the trilemma still works here. So, what is the solution? When you try to research any crypto project these days, you will probably hear that it is trying to solve the blockchain trilemma, but then you will find that the solution many blockchains go for is reducing the number of computers verifying transactions. This most of the time leads to increased scalability and high speeds, but still it gives a small group of individuals and companies control over the network. So, decentralization suffers. Also, this means that they can very easily collude together and attack the network if they want. So, security also suffers. Other blockchains like Ethereum try to solve this problem by using what is known as layer 2 scaling solutions, such as rollups. These rollups simply process some transactions outside the main Ethereum blockchain, compresses them together into smaller size, and then sends them to be stored on the main Ethereum blockchain. We actually have a full video about rollups and how they work in details if you want to learn more about them. At the end of this video, we hope you learned what you need to know about the blockchain trilemma, and if you liked our video, hit the like button, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or video ideas, and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.